before you start your puppy obedience, make sure you watch the first DT the dog video. There's some important information on how to get started. Also, confining your dog in the small kennel for at least a half hour before your session will help funnel your dog's energy and enthusiasm onto the actual dog training session. You're most likely gonna get a better result if you keep your dog a little bored before you start your training. That makes the training look even more fun. To get started, you'll need to have your leash and your strap collar on your puppy. Um, and remember, we've got an older puppy here, but we're just using him de to demonstrate techniques that you'll actually use with your younger dog. And the first start, uh, the first step of this process is going to be going back to making sure your dog knows that you have treats in your hand and making sure your dog will take treats out of either hand. Believe it or not, they actually have to learn this. Good. Once they know that you've got the treats in your hand, you can begin manipulating your dog to do all kinds of different things. Good. So that'll be the positive reinforcement end. Now the negative reinforcement end will be the use of our lead. The lead is going to help us control our dog, move them around a bit, and when we pull on the lead, it's going to produce a slightly negative effect. In other words, the dog doesn't like being tugged on, and he's going to change his behavior due to the pull of the lead. So the positive reinforcement and the negative reinforcement are going to work in concert to help teach our dog different concepts. Now you remember, we started teaching our dog to sit before he eats, so he should already have a start with that. And we're going to continue on with teaching the dog to sit uh, through our use of a leash and the treats. So we get our puppy moving around and they know that you've got the treat. You're just going to raise up on the lead and raise the treat. Look at the, notice the angle that I've, I'm holding these treats at to keep the dog's attention. Good, good. And to get him to look up. And when he looks up, that's naturally going to get him to seek the sit posture. So again, we're going to raise the lead up and put our treats in a position such that the dog's got to look up to see. And once he starts performing the command, we're going to actually start using the verbal command itself. In other words, we're not going to start saying the word sit or giving a sit whistle to our dog when they're not listening and we're having to pull on the lead. We're going to wait until they're actually performing the task so they have a positive association and they're confident when they hear that word. Sit, good boy, good boy. In the beginning, accept very small amount of progress. They don't really know what we mean. We can't speak English to them, so we have to show the dog through our actions. Work on small micro sessions uh, for each concept that you're working during your obedience session. Your obedience session should be about 10 to 15 minutes long. Dogs have a short attention span, and you're going to work in several micro sessions within your total macro session. So every time that we quit, on one subject, that dog is going to remember that what just happened in that subject. So if we switch subjects, and each time we switch subjects, we end on a success, the dog is going to remember the success. So it gives us an opportunity to do a lot more work by switching subjects. So for each one of our obedience sessions, we'll work a little bit on getting our dog to sit. In the beginning, we're just going to accept the basic sit. Then we're also going to work on teaching our dog to heal next to us. And the way we're going to do that again is we're going to present the treat and then we're going to have the lead in a position so we can control our dog. Good. And we're going to use the leash by tugging on the leash when he doesn't listen and giving a treat when he does and get him used to walking next to our side. Heel. Good. 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 Heel. Good. Okay. Good. And if we're going to do multi-sided healing, which we're going to do with DT, in other words, he's eventually going to heal on either side of us, we'll switch sides. Good, 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 heel, good. Clearly the dog is doing what we want him to do, so we're saying the command to build that association. This technique, by the way, of using treats to get the dog to learn a procedure is called luring. We're luring him in to doing things, and at the same time we're getting him used to the feel of the negative reinforcement when he doesn't listen. We're not tugging hard on the lead, folks. We're just tugging enough so it's kind of an annoying feeling that the dog wants to go away. The third procedure that we're going to perform with our puppy is what we call the recall. And in our program, we're going to use the same word, 
uh, as a command that we did for walking at heel, which is the heel command. And we're gonna also associate the whistle. And our whistle command for the recall is multiple toots on the whistle. So if you can, right away with your puppy, incorporate your whistle. If you're gonna use your whistle with the, in your training when your dog's an adult, use it during your puppy training, okay? This, the uh, whistle signal for sit, by the way, is one toot. Sit, starting with our sit command. Good. Sit. Good. Good. Notice now, if he didn't sit, I would have raised up on the lead. Now we're working to our recall. Okay, so we're going to let our dog move. We're going to let our dog move away for us for the recall. And then we're going to call him and tug the lead. When the dog comes to us, we're going to give him the treat. Again, the main, the main concept is that when we call him, uh, if he doesn't come to us right away, we're going to tug the lead. And if he does come to us, we're going to give the, the, him the treat. So again, positive and negative reinforcement working in concert. Good dog, heel. Good. Once the dog begins coming to me, heel. Heel, I'll begin giving a command. And that's how you can get a, a start with teaching your dog what the commands mean. And then also, equally as important, beginning the dog and understanding what the types of reinforcements he will see as an adult are in the training progress. As you progress with your dog and your dog ages and gets larger, um, your expectations of his performance should increase. Each day we're going to ask a little bit more out of our dog in regards to their performance with the commands. So for instance, in the beginning I'll be happy with my dog simply sitting and putting his rear end on the ground. As time goes on I'll actually get him to stay for longer periods of time and um, again working at a pace that he can be at least 75 percent successful, making sure I end that micro session with a success and moving on. If we end with a success we're always going to be progressing in our dog training. Many different elements have to be present in order to have a good dog training experience. Number one, we have to have the right grounds. Number two, we have to have the right equipment. DT Systems is gonna provide that. And number three, we need to have the right dog. DT the dog here has been